Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and today we're taking a look at the pluggable solid state drive kit. This is a do-it-yourself thing where you can take an NVMe drive like this one and make your own external drive out of it. Uh, this enclosure is tool free and works with any NVMe SSD and you should get pretty decent performance because it does support USB 3.1 Gen 2. And in this video, we're going to install this Lexar drive that I looked at a little while back because I've got uh, its uh, disk mark benchmark score from when I tested it inside a computer. So we'll be able to compare how it performs in this enclosure uh, versus how it performs normally when it's installed inside a PC. So we're going to have a lot of fun here with a little do-it-yourself stuff going on. I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the enclosure here came in free of charge from Pluggable, and the drive here came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get this thing unboxed and install the drive and see how it works. So let's take this thing out of the box and and see what is inside. We've got some documentation here, which we'll look at if we need to. A little uh, notice here to get a review going. Uh, and this is the drive enclosure itself. And again, this is toolless, so you don't need to uh, have any screwdrivers or anything on hand here. And it looks like we need to use this switch here in the back to unlock everything. Um, it appears as though this part is metal, so it's got a little bit of a heat sink in there. Uh, what I don't see is any kind of thermal pad on this, so it looks like maybe that might be in the box. So oh, let's see. Yep, there is a thermal pad here. Now you probably want to use these thermal pads on your NVMe SSD to help heat transfer from the drive to the external case. I would definitely recommend uh, installing those and using those on your drive. You might want to find a few more of these if you do plan to swap drives in and out. Uh, this is not all that expensive. It's about $60, and sometimes you can find it for less, so you might just buy a couple of these if your intent is to use a bunch of drives with it. Also in the box, we have a couple of USB-C cables. We've got a USB-C to USB-C and a USB-C to USB-A, which is great. So they're not using any crazy adapters here. You're getting two distinct cables in the box. That should help quite a bit there, and I think that is it for what's in the box. And it looks like you don't need to even screw the drive in. Uh, it's got a little rubber gasket here with a uh, little slot that the drive will kind of push into, I believe. So we're going to give this a shot uh, when we install this drive. And let's go to our overhead view here and have a look at how this goes in. And let's see here. Let's open this up and pop this in. Um, so what we're going to do is just align the drive here with the pins and then push it down. So just pop it in like that and then push it down over the rubber thing here and it looks like we are installed. All right, so what we're going to do now is install the uh, thermal pads on the drive and I'm just going to place them on top of the chips here. And again, these will transfer heat from the drive to the case and you'll get a little better performance out of your drive because typically uh, these drives run a little hot and a lot of them will uh, throttle themselves. They'll slow down um, if they're not cooling off properly. And just put that on like that. And now we're going to just reassemble the case here. And it might require a little bit of juggling here just to make sure, actually look, it looks like it fits pretty nicely in here. So it is able to go right over those stickers there, and then when I push this shut, you'll hear it click. So it locks in, and then you can't open it back up again unless you flick the switch that way. So there you go. So now the installation is complete. A pretty simple process here, uh, and now we're ready to plug it into the PC and run a benchmark on it. All right, so I've got the drive here connected to my computer's Thunderbolt port. This is not a Thunderbolt drive, it's USB but Thunderbolt ports are compatible with USB-C, and I know that this port is the fastest one that I have on this particular computer. So this one supports USB 3.1 Gen 2, which supports a theoretical bandwidth of 10 gigabits per second. Uh, there are other ports that you might find on your computer, or perhaps even the same ones that I have, that don't support the Gen 2 standard and will run at half of that maximum bandwidth. So you really need to look at your computer's manual and see what ports you've got. 
And then if you've got a Gen 2 port, plug the drive into that Gen 2 port to get the best performance. Now, what I want to show you is a benchmark that I ran on the drive here with the NVMe that uh, we just installed. And as you can see here, we're reading and writing at a, just over 800 megabytes per second. And that's equivalent to about 6.4 gigabits per second. So we're going beyond the base uh, USB 5 gigabit speed and definitely making use of that Gen 2 bandwidth that we have available for us here, but we're not using all of it. So you're not going to get that full 10 gigabits, but it looks like we're getting close to that. And what I wanted to do here was pull up a test that I ran on this same drive earlier when it was plugged into the PC directly in one of those NVMe slots that you have uh, on your motherboard. And as you can see here, the performance is very different just because even though this is the fastest USB available, we don't have all of the bandwidth and ability to transfer as much data as we would if it was installed directly. So you can see here the uh, sequential reads and writes are much lower than this drive is capable of. We're also seeing a drop off in performance on its random reads and writes, but it's not doing bad. In fact, this drive right now as configured uh, is doing better than a lot of uh, off the shelf external USB SSDs. So we're getting really good performance here, but again, not as good as what the drive can really do if it was plugged directly into a motherboard. So overall, it's a pretty nicely performing enclosure here for a USB drive. It won't give you the same performance that the NVMe drive again would do inside of the computer, but uh, it is good for what it is. And it's a uh, potentially more affordable way to make your own high performance external SSD. And you can, of course, go around and shop for uh, the lowest price devices that you might want to find if you're on a budget. Uh, it will get warm to the touch. That's because you've got the uh, heat sink here built into the case. Nothing to be alarmed about. Most of these drives will uh, keep themselves cool. And remember, this only works with NVMe M2 drives. You might see drives out there called M2 SATA. Those will not work with this, just the M2 NVMe drives. So choose carefully, uh, but the good news is the NVMe drives are the highest performing ones out there. So not a bad little device here. I like the fact that it's toolless and very easy to get into. Uh, so that's good. You've got a little drive indicator light there as well. Uh, so altogether, a nice little package here. Great for IT pros that are constantly moving data around. A great way to maybe image a, a small capacity SSD to a larger one. Those are kind of the things that I would do with this. And again, having it being completely toolless is a great way to get all of that done. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.